Let's create a pivotal impact. Friends in the industry. So before we get started in our interview today, I wanted to take a moment and highlight the critical role professional drivers have with respect to operating safely on our roadways, but also the key role that they play to ensure that our customer's experience is successful. So when you consider all of the steps professional drivers need to complete to successfully deliver a commodity for a customer's order, it's honestly pretty comprehensive, but it's also super impressive the number of things that they get right to make it happen. So everything from communicating with dispatch, loading the correct cargo, cargo securement, thorough inspection of the vehicle and trailers, as well as obviously traveling safely on our roadways just to reach the customer. But from there, then it's communicating with the customer, ensuring that that equipment or that trailer is placed in the right location, so that way ultimately the customer is satisfied. So in order for these things to go right, and in order to satisfy our customers, which obviously as business we really need to happen, we need to make sure that these components happen daily. So I'm Josh Hannabury, your host here at the Truck Focus Podcast, and our mission here is simple. We're connecting transportation industry leaders to the industry to help create a pivotal change. So to better understand the key components that go into operating safely as a professional driver, I think it's crucial that we speak to the professionals that are living this life and performing these tasks that are required daily which takes us to today's episode, as I'm super excited to have a really good conversation with Sven Nielsen, heavy haul professional driver with Bowline Logistics. So during our conversation, Sven takes us through what he sees are key components to operating safely, especially when you consider some of the hauls that Sven has to do that are extremely overdimensional, extremely heavy. And from there, we also highlight some key components to consider when navigating the relationship with a customer, so that way ultimately they're happy, which leads to our success. So a huge takeaway from our conversation is when Sven also talks about what it takes to operate on a permit and the safety components to consider to arrive safely, as well as Ben gets to talk about how passionate he is about photography and some of the incredible pictures he's taken along the way between equipment, commodities, obviously, and the scenery. It's absolutely incredible. So if you're wanting to see more of the pictures, I also highly recommend that you do so by clicking the links to Sven's social media accounts, which obviously are right below. I've also included um, the link for Bowline's website, which is bowlinelogistics.com. And I highly recommend that you learn more about them just to see the different types of services that they offer. They're an exceptional company. So before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. So if this is the first time that you've joined the Trek Focus podcast community and you're taking the moment to listen, I really do appreciate your time, as well as to our dedicated community. I'm just super grateful for your continued investment of time, but also the fact that you're taking the knowledge that's shared and you're implying it in our industry. You're creating those pivotal impacts in your day-to-day interactions. That means so much. So throughout our conversation today, if Sven says something that you're like, yes, I could really implement that in my place of work or in my life. I ask that you let me know what that is. So comments, send me a direct message, whatever it is, but also share it out. Because again, with Sven's leadership in our conversation is huge. So again, the more people know about it, the more pivotal impacts that we can create. So that's the challenge for today's episode. So I'm super excited for the impact our conversation is gonna have. Let's get to it. All right, Sven, super excited today, super grateful that you're taking the time to join me on the Truck Focus podcast. And yeah, there's a couple of really important things that we're going to talk about today. So first, obviously, you're in the land of heavy haul, operating as a professional driver for Bowline Logistics. So I'm really excited just to kind of navigate that space. But also, I'm really excited to navigate your, I would say, the differences between if, yeah, obviously, as people will learn really fast in your backstory, you came here about 15 years ago. And I just want to know the differences that you see within the transportation industry, but just as people in general, I think that's really important just to kind of highlight, like, again, your backstory, what you're about, and then really dig deep into different components of what it's like working at Bowline. I think that's really important for our listeners. So welcome, my friend. This is exciting. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that uh, somebody's interested in my story. And uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Good, good. Yeah, no, and uh, I want to really set the stage. So when Sven and I first had a conversation, literally once I got off the phone, I was like, this dude's for real. And it was awesome because the, uh, yeah, just the different gentleman at Bowline that I've been really working closely with, it's nice when someone can speak highly of someone else. So that happened right away. But then when we had a conversation, I'm like, man, this guy gets it. He's passionate. He's really, like, you take a lot of pride. I think that's huge. And also from a picture perspective, like I've, I've been sharing some of your pictures that you've shared online and I'm like, 
man, this guy's got it going on. So I am really excited. So your story is fascinating. So I'm just grateful, my friends. So yeah, why don't you, uh, yeah, absolutely. So to start us off, why don't you kind of give us the rundown on just, yeah, who you are and just your background within transportation? Of course, no problem. Um, so I'm originally from Switzerland. I moved to Canada in 2013. I am in the trucking industry more or less all my life. I started uh, small with printers and whatnot. And 2007, 2007, I made my CDL. And ever since I'm driving big trucks, I started in Switzerland for the first two years, traveling mainly up to Norway and then decided to move to Norway for the next two years, uh, hauling mainly fresh um, the dairy food, uh, fish, a lot of fish out of Norway, all over Europe, Western Europe, Italy, Spain, France, pretty much everywhere in the Western Europe. And then uh, decided to follow my childhood dream that I have since I was 10 years old and saw a convoy for the first time. I always wanted to come to Canada. Uh, weirdly enough, never to the US. I always said I'm going to be a truck driver in Canada. And 2013 made my, uh, my move. Started first out in Windsor, Ontario uh, as a small company that unfortunately didn't work out. And then moved out west here to Edmonton. Worked for Vescan in uh, bulk mainly propane, but I ended up doing almost everything uh, for three and a half years and then decided I want to go back to my passion, flat bedding. Uh, that was always my passion. And uh, I'm not just a big, I'm just not a big uh, bulk, liquid bulk fan. And uh, I went back to flat bedding. Uh, that is now about five, 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 five and a half years ago. Uh, worked first on regular flatbed high boys, uh, first only all, all over the States, and then in a smaller company here, uh, doing mainly in the West, Edmonton, Vancouver to the coast and back. And uh, a year and a little bit ago, I, through a friend of mine, uh, got in touch with Tyler and Bowline Logistics. and. He welcomed me into the company. He must have seen something that uh, he liked uh, or heard something that I said that he liked. And uh, I can honestly say this is probably the best job I've had so far. Uh, it's the most challenging. Uh, that's what I, what I like. I like the challenges. I like, uh, I'm getting quickly bored if I do the same stuff over and over again. And uh, Tyler is no short of giving me challenges and uh, uh, I like it. And uh, I work first, I drove for about a year. I drove on step decks, low pro step decks uh, all over the place. And then I got promoted, I wanna say, into heavy haul where I'm working now for two months roughly um, on seven and eight axles. And uh, I'm happy and I'm, I can't wait to see where it goes next. And uh, I'm, I'm enjoying every minute, minute of it. Powerful. That's so awesome. So to our listeners, you can see I'm not lying. This is why yeah. I, get, I got super stoked right away because your journey is super fascinating. And yeah, the progression. So we were talking about that before we hit record is you have a very progressive mindset within industry. And you're yeah. right. Once you once things become stagnant and repetitive and oh, I know how to do this, it does get boring and you kind of lose yeah. the life in it. So it's nice to see that you yeah. really own that. That's cool. So yeah. what's it's, that? You you gotta I, I think it's it's uh, progression is 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 life, right? You you have to you have to progress, you have to set yourself goals to go somewhere. Uh, to go to get somewhere in your career, right? It's uh, as soon as you start to, to, to just do the same thing over and over again. It's um, I don't like I I know there is people they they like that they're happy with that and that's fine for them. I'm not that kind of person. I I need to get going and um, that's that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. What uh, for, so from when you're in Europe. 
and you're obviously hauling over there. What would you say is the biggest difference if it's, again, maybe axle combination, weight allowance, just maybe narrowness of road, but what would be the difference between hauling over there and hauling over here? Uh, I'm getting this question quite a lot from other drivers as well. And it's, it's not easy to answer. Um, it's essentially, <laughs> it's the same job, but it's not because it's, uh, everything is quite different over there. Um, I, I, like, I like the European trucks for the technology. I always say the European technology is 10, 15 years ahead of North American technology, easy. Yeah. And uh, from other European drivers, I, they always back me up on that. Um, obviously here you have the classic trucks, the, the, the ones, the, the long hoods and whatnot. And over there, it's just um, the technology. It's more about technology, about, about getting it perfectly done. It is easier over there because trucks are limited to 90 kilometers an hour or 56 miles an hour. All the trucks all over Europe. Um, other than this, it's, uh, the weights are very similar. Um, most, mostly it's 40 tons. There is exceptions. Um, once you go up North Scandinavia, they have, they also have 60 tons up to 60 tons. Um, I drove up to 52 up there on a six axle combination, but direct, if you think about here, Canada, North America, 52 tons is not sitting on a six axle over here. Over there, it does. Uh, the weights are, the, you can put more weights on the axles. Um, it's just that it's again, technology, right? Yeah. That allows yeah. allows that. Um, it's, uh, when you go in hours of service, it's a whole different setup. Uh, it's completely different. Um, it's, it's hard to compare. It's, uh, um, I like both of it. I, I like, I like Europe. I like, North America, I can't imagine to go back there because um, driving in Germany, for example, is like driving the 401 through Toronto just 24 seven. It's so packed. You don't have the freedom. You don't have the long distances like you have over here. You're not driving for three, four days in the same direction, right? It's, it's more unloading and loading, um, and, and just busier in general. It's not as relaxed as it is over here. I think that is the, the, the big difference. They both have their pros and cons. Um, there is certain things that I would like to do over here the same way like we did over in Europe. Uh, on the other hand, I, <laughs> I would like to introduce Europe to certain things from over here. Um, but uh, it, it is the same job, but there is a lot, a lot of like, that would be a podcast, podcast all on its own. If I would totally. start going down into totally. details, yeah. what all the dif differences are. Okay. Well, that's number two then. So we, uh, we yeah. planted that seed. So that's <laughs> awesome. The, uh, so you also said that from a childhood dream, you wanted to become a professional driver in Canada. Yeah. What kind of sparked that? It, it, it literally was the movie Convoy. Uh, there was, I, I saw it, I don't even remember whether it was on a, on a VHS, it must have been on a VHS, or maybe it was on cable TV. Um, I started watching this movie and immediately from the beginning, like the old, like you see the, the, the desert there and then you hear the guys on the radio talk and then you see this, the, the black Mac there coming into picture. And it was, I was immediately hooked and watching this whole movie, it's, it's, a, I think it's this, this, this brotherhood that they had that back then, the, 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 the trucks, obviously, um, it all fascinated me and I, I wanted to do that. And, so, and that was 10 years old. And when they, after that, whenever they ask in school, you know, what do you want to be when you're a big? Like you have all you have all the answers, like fireman, police, uh, astronaut, or whatever. And I always said I want to be a truck driver in Canada. And nice. and it took me twenty five years to get there. But uh, yeah, I I'm really happy here. I I think I reached my dream. I, I 
I arrived in my dream and I'm just enjoying it as long as I can. Good, man. Good. That's powerful. That really, again, that speaks volumes to yourself. And when we were talking about goal setting, I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So when we're looking at your life within, obviously working at Bowline Logistics, the progression, I think, is awesome. So I'm glad you hit that right away because that was kind of where I wanted to go was like, what do you see as progression? So instead of going to the term progression, we'll go to appreciation. Going from step deck, rock and high boy, or sorry, it was, it was low, right? You're running low boy. Like, yeah, right, bow, low boy. Bow right. Yeah. And then now you're in heavy haul. Yeah. Through that, what would you say would, you, so from an appreciation standpoint, what you're like, just through your own personal journey, would you say like, Oh, I love doing this. Like, what would that one thing be that is it because you were able to get the promotion? Is it because of the types of equipment that you're hauling or what, what do you think you're most appreciative for in that space? Um, I'm, I'm most appreciative. I would say for the opportunity that nice. Tyler gave me, uh, because I have, I had, when I started with Bowline, I had very little experience with, uh, for example, equipment. I, I've, I've never drove a dozer before. I never sat in an excavator before. And all of a sudden I had to load them, even on low boys, just the smaller version, right? And um, it's just that I, I just try to do my job as good as I can. And, and I ask questions. I'm not shy of asking questions if I don't know anything um, because I wanna be, I wanna make this like every trip or every load be a success for the company. And I guess um, it, I must have, obviously I must have done a good job. <laughs> I, I did ask, I, I did ask Tyler, um, I wanna say maybe three, four months in, I asked Tyler the first time that, or I, I voiced my, my wish that I would like to eventually go into heavy haul. And um, yeah, well, it, it took its time, but now looking back, I was glad that he, that I stayed for about a year because I did a lot of different equipments in a smaller version on a step deck that I'm doing now. What makes my life easier now in heavy haul when I do similar equipment or the same equipment just in a, on a bigger scale, right? Like a, a, a hauling a, a 200 excavator is it's still an excavator, but it's it's you, you learn on the small version easier than and then you know what to do when you get into the big stuff right that's what, right where, that's where right. especially uh, load securement and whatnot is coming into place yeah. uh, what is way more important well it's always important but it's yeah, uh, yeah. Right. it can be more this 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 yeah disastrous yeah yeah disastrous oh, yeah that's the word yeah absolutely it can be yeah. more disaster disastrous uh, on a on a heavy haul, on a, on a multi axle, absolutely. Uh, on a on a step deck, in, yeah. in my opinion. Agreed. What would yeah. you say then? Again, touching multiple different types of pieces of equipment that are a lot bigger than most. What's the biggest challenge? Is it a a piece of equipment? Is it just navigating like through different? If it's the mountains and you're a lot heavier, what would you say is the biggest challenge you've had to overcome now? Um, from going from low pro or from step deck into heavy haul. Yeah. Um, it's, um, I want to say, well, one is definitely the, the, um, the securement, load securement. You have to be way more, um, pay way more attention to it. Definitely. Uh, the other thing is actually what I find is, is permits, um, because they, once you get into those dim dimensions, you, you're you not driving just a little bit off route and go back. You're driving uh, up to like almost the whole trip, sometimes de depend on the dimensions. You're driving more and more off interstate, uh, especially in the States. Here in Canada, we're actually pretty good because it's at least Western Canada. Um, you, you more or less, they try to keep you uh, on the main roads. Um, but in the States, you go, you do a lot of detours, a lot of small towns and whatnot. And that is definitely a bigger challenge. Um, navigating 300 miles back road, uh, left and right and left and right. Every three, four miles, you have a turn 
compared to coming into Saskatchewan, you hit Highway 1 and next thing you know, you're in Alberta <laughs> with the same load, right? It's so the perfect time to take a nap. <laughs> yeah, more or less, yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is, this is definitely, I found a challenge, but also for me, an exciting challenge. Like this is one of the reasons I want to do this. I want to be challenged. I want to use my brain, not just idling down the highway, right? That's powerful. So when you're navigating, obviously you've been all over North America now, do you have kind of a favorite, maybe not a lane per se, but a favorite area you like traveling through? Um, <laughs> everything that's far away from a city. <laughs> yeah. North America, North America is such a beautiful uh, continent. There is so many beautiful places. Uh, I mean, yeah, of course, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, going east, west, uh, Saskatchewan, crossing Saskatchewan is not exactly the most exciting thing in the world. Uh, once you drove it for two hours, you've pretty much seen everything there is. Um, I want to say, well, I love them. I love the mountains in general. I love driving through the Rockies. I love um, uh, everywhere where there is lots of forest, uh, rolling hills like going down southeast uh, through the Appalachians, the, the, the Blue Mountains. It's a beautiful, it's just beautiful country. But the same goes for um, driving through uh, rich uh, fields like Ohio or, or what, like, and even Michigan has some nice places. I mean, I, I know a lot of people don't <laughs> think so, but there is nice places outside Detroit. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, as soon as I get out of the city uh, uh, into the open area, uh, there is so much, so much beauty. Like I love Texas. Oh, Texas is beautiful. Like, and it's not everywhere, just desert and hot. Yes. It's, yeah. Yeah. No, that's but awesome. Good. It's hard to say where, where I really like it. Like, like as long as I think the more things I, I, I come up with, right. Like, I've been to the Yukon, uh, the road to the, up to the Yukon. It's just, this is, it's like vacations, paid vacation for me. Right. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really good appreciation too, because I think when you got your blinders on and you are just yeah. kind of plugging around, you, you really do like ignore like the landscapes, but when you're actually like mindful of like, wow, Look at that. And oh my goodness. Look at, like, yeah, you're right though. You described that really well yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's important. Like you, you have to be aware of your surroundings where you at, right? That's absolutely. In my opinion. Like good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that paints a really good picture of even just life on the road too, is just yeah. really acknowledging exactly that what is around you instead of when you're in on the 401, all you see is either fumes and vehicles and you're like, just want to get out of here. Just want to get out of here. Where yeah. when yeah. you're on the open all road, you see is, is, is asphalt and it's all gray and gray and, and different shades of gray. And uh, that's, I, I don't like that. I, I like to be out in the green and, and soon as the more green I see around the road, the better. That's awesome. It's good, man. It's good. So what's your take on safety? And I know the word safety, people have a different definition, but when you're looking at your life, you're behind the wheel operating, obviously, Bull and Logistics, you're hauling some massive equipment. What's your thoughts when you're processing, if it's the permit route, if it's obviously hills and slopes, tight areas, traffic, all that stuff, what's your take on safety? Well, in, in safety in general is, I think... The, the main problem with safety is that uh, common sense went out the window 20 years ago. That is the main issue with safety. Uh, back in the days, uh, it was just like common sense. Well, it, that a piece of equipment is 80,000 pounds. Well, I might need more than just two chains. Like it's just common sense, right? And, and this is where, where I think where all the safety rules and regulations come in, right? Now, uh, Bola in particular, um, as we grow, and I understand that, and I know I understand that, I guess, better than that, or I can process it better than, than certain other uh, uh, drivers. Um, it's, we started as a really small company. I, I was, I believe I was like the, the a seventh or eighth driver 
in the fleet uh, where now we are sitting somewhere in the mid 20s I, I last I remember. Um, of course you have if you have a fleet of seven eight good drivers you can you don't need a lot of safety regulations because common sense is there and everybody can read the rules and the laws and they know what what need to be done and they follow that. Now as you grow bigger you have to have safety measurements we have to and and i understand this and um do i like it no because not really because i still use common sense and most of the time common sense is is fulfills all the all the check marks that needed to be done um but I, I like I. There is certain things that need to be done, and uh, just in order for the company to keep growing and to be safe and not getting into trouble with DOT or or anything else, right? And uh, it has to be uh, obeyed, and we have to do um, some extra paperwork or whatever it is. And and I understand this, and it needs to be done. It's a part of the job. There's a lot of things that also a lot of drivers don't understand or have a problem with that i just think it's a part of the job like it's it's not trucking is not just sitting on the front left side and rolling down the highway there is way more stuff involved and um i think this is this makes the difference between <laughs> it's maybe not the best term but there there is always this diversion between steering wheel holder and the truck driver um we all are steering wheel holders that's just the way it is but i think the difference of being a professional driver is that you know what need to be done and you know this is a part of your job and you you just do it right. and if you don't like it then this job might not be for you you can go. You can go to Amazon and drive with the Sprinter around if you don't want to do certain things, right? Same goes for e-logs or whatever, right? It's, or safety, or or yeah, it's it's just be professional about what you're doing, um, and and with equipment, it's 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 the same, right? You you just you have to be aware. I think one of the main safety things that I see also is we are lacking of at the moment is or, or more and more is be aware of what you're doing and what you're hauling uh you, you see all like especially in bc you see all those those rolled over trucks in turns and i want to say 90 percent of them it's just speed they they go too fast it's always go 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 and they they don't slow down and they don't they're not aware of how much weight they they pull and how much it's going to push them out and until it's too late right and then they try to save it and make it just all that worse um i think this is a main problem this this melt i i i haven't gone too deep into this quite honestly i haven't even bothered to look through it uh because i don't have to do it but I think it's a it, it's a good idea. It's a good thing if people use what they learn, yeah. right? You you yeah. you learn something and then you go on the road and it looks like it all goes out the window. Everything they learn is going out the window, right? Uh, it's and you see more and more. I think more and more you see it's younger younger drivers. But it's what is sad because the industry needs the next generation right it's it, it's needed but it doesn't help if they are just throwing all the knowledge out of the window the moment they sit behind the wheel right it's you, you still and what what does what does it do you good any good if you pass somebody into oncoming traffic it's at the end of the day it gets you maybe five minutes earlier to where you need to be and you're risking lives for five minutes maybe even your own it's just not worth it it's just not worth it and and yeah now with heavy haul especially going into turns especially going into the mountains you just you have to slow down and it holds up the the drivers behind you but 
for me personally, I don't care. I, I do my thing. I drive safe. And if they want to go, be my guest. Go ahead. You're you're risking not my life anymore if you're behind, like crawling up and right up my the, the end of my trailer, right? But I, I think it's it's getting worse over time, unfortunately. And especially in BC, Highway 5 is at the moment, I want to say one of the most dangerous roads to drive because people just don't care. They they like what I see on social media videos popping up almost on a daily basis, trucks passing each other on, on, on double solid lines into oncoming traffic. It's insane. And I drove this road for three and a half years, twice or four times a week, and it's getting worse. It's, it's sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. And I think, <clears throat> so a couple of things that you said there, I think are really important is some, I was trying, when you said common sense, I was uh, I was in a meeting with a with a guy that I have a ton of respect for. He's in insurance and he does inspecting type stuff for insurance companies. And he's like, common sense has to be trained because if you don't know, and you try and say you don't know, and I was like, okay. But then he goes on to say that safety is progressive, and you have to have building blocks. So if you said when you have seven or eight trucks and the fleet understands. For the, I would say the majority of the basics when it comes to regulation, these are my hours. Okay, no problem. I can figure that out. This is cargo securement. This is what you're hauling. Okay, so you kind of create your sense of your, your own ecosystem when it comes to safety. But then as you expand, you're right, though. It's like, well, not everyone's coming with the same experience or the same passion. So you really got to mentor each other and peer to peer mentorship. Like you're a leader. Absolutely. You're a leader and you're a professional driver. So no, I, I see it, man. I, I I watch. So those that are listening, I always say hop on YouTube because you can watch Sven's face. So when you're talking, I'm like, you care about it. So anytime you care about something and you're willing to talk about it, that's leadership. So as long as you're doing it, obviously proactively, it's a good leadership. And so when we're looking at just the direction of safety, we need more professionals like yourself that are saying, well, this is common sense to me. And this, we just have to follow these. Like, and you just really start working together. You start sharing, like, what is your truth and your experience. So, but I'm really glad that you hit that because I think as companies do grow, like transportation companies are growing right now. It's a good time to grow your your trucking companies. It's more so yeah. just making sure you have the foundational pieces and making sure that safety isn't just okay. It's in the corner. It's in the closet. We know it exists. It's no, 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 no. It's how do we do things? Because I don't want this excavator to fall off and hit someone behind me. I want to make sure it stays on the trailer, gets to the customer and all that stuff. But you really hit that well. So I appreciate it. Yeah. For me, I think you're right when it comes when what, what this other guy said, uh, common sense is taught. But I think it's it starts young. It starts when you grow up. And I think it needs failure in common sense to learn common sense. Like when you're young, you have to fall off that ladder at one point. You're a kid, you have, you have to fall down the stairs in order to understand, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, that is not something I have, I can play around or whatnot. And, and as you get older, you, you start to see automatically, okay, that might be a, a, a danger right there just from your experience as a child. Common sense has to be taught from, from young age on. And the only way to learn it is, the only way to success is learning by failure. Yes. And that goes the same with, and, and that builds common sense. Yes, my agree. Opinion. Yes, no, that's awesome. No, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, and again, I, I really appreciate your leadership and the fact that you can get passionate on stuff because far too often, I think people are just like, I don't know, it's like, no, 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 let's have a conversation about it. Let's dig deep. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. The, um, so obviously, Bowline, like most businesses, are in business to service customers. And I would say from a outsider looking in, I'm very observant of Bowline, just as an organization. And it's been really cool to watch their growth. You've experienced growth. You're part of the growth solution. And when you're thinking about from a professional driver to customer standpoint, how important is that transaction for yourself? If it's communicating, if it's being on time, whatever it is that you process, how important is it? And how do you kind of set your day to make sure that, yeah, you're meeting that expectation? Uh, I want to say it's crucial. Um, only a happy customer is a returning customer. That's how I see it. 
if if you and a lot has to do in my opinion is um the direct interaction between me as a driver and the customer because i'm tyler can be a nice guy on the phone dispatch can be a nice person on the phone whatever the direct contact of the driver this is what sets the standard of the company and if you're rolling in on a customers with a bad attitude or just being pissy about everything or being demanding or whatnot this is it's just not working um communication is key ahead of time call the customers ahead and and give them an estimate and don't give them in my opinion don't give a customer an estimate that puts you into on the pressure on the time pressure like if you if you're checking okay yeah i'm so and so far away if i'm keep driving at the absolute maximum speed i can go i can get there in that time and then you give them this time as an estimate you're never going to reach that because there has to be one red light and you're screwed already on the way there has to be one idiot on the road or there has to be an accident even if it holds you up just five minutes these five minutes going down the line they're putting you one two hours behind so give i want to say give yourself as a driver enough room for errors for for delays and then communicate this with the customer and then when you show up it's mainly politeness if you, you have to be polite and and i don't know apparently well, canadians they from what i heard they're quite a polite uh, folk and and i've learned politeness as well back in switzerland um, yeah politeness your attitude how you how you show up if if you're nice about it and you, you go there like who do i talk to here i talk to this person on the phone this is how you get the furthest uh you you and even also something uh, is that even if whoever is there the first person you see or even if it is the customer and they give you a bad attitude or they are not nice to you it doesn't mean that you can go down to their level of attitude you're still going to be you have to still be polite because eventually it's it's not this person that you're dealing with it's going to be the person above or maybe a supervisor walking over over the plant over the through the yard and knows he knows his his worker and he knows he might have a shitty attitude but then he walks up to you or he sees that you're still polite this is this brings you the first and and this is what in my opinion makes good customer connections and and those are the connections that that want to see you again they want to see you again and you know besides a nice truck well and a nice truck i don't mean it has to be a fully pimped uh, brand new whatnot it, it doesn't matter but if you if you show up with two week old dirt and grime and, and and oil or whatever it is all over your truck it's just yeah it's just it just shows how you work it's it's the face of how you work as a and not as a company as a as a person itself like it, 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 you show up with with a dirty truck they're gonna look way closer at your the product that you're delivering compared to when you show up with a nice truck it shows that you take care of your equipment that means automatically you also take care of their equipment right and it's just it's all visual and and audio it's it's so important that in my opinion this is this is customer care absolutely. to a certain point right absolutely yeah dude you crushed that so a couple of things there so i i learned a long time ago the term under promise over deliver and when you say well i'm 2 hours and 12 minutes away and you're not there 1 second after that it shifts the persona of the next thing that I learned is you only got one shot to make a good first impression. Oh, so absolutely. you are bang on for that. And I think that's a huge component of just the high stress within industry is give yourself a little more time and yeah. show up to impress. And you're right yeah. when you were talking, because 
if you're on a job site, say they're pouring concrete and they're, they're just finished twist and rebar, not too many people can wake up in the morning and say, I'm so happy to do this. So they might be a little grouchy. It, they're running behind because something else and all of a sudden the concrete truck's yelling at them because this is going to dry up. Let's get, so they're under a lot of pressure. So you're absolutely right. When you roll up the site, you're a hero. And if they're having a bad day, you can always make it better. So you're, yeah. that was really sound, man. Good job. Really good job. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is. It, you're you're absolutely right. It's it's under under over promise. No, over deliver. Under promise, over deliver. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it it is that sums it up pretty good actually. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and yeah, politeness. I think polite, being polite to people brings you the furthest. Yes. Where, wherever you go, actually, it doesn't matter. Agreed. Yeah, man. Oh. People need to hear that. Like, so it, so when I look at me, like from a listener standpoint, we do have professional drivers, which I have a ton of respect for. And I like how you broke that down. Like there's, I say you, you're either a driver. So yeah, you can hold the steering wheel and you can go down the road or you're a professional driver and yeah. you're really mindful of what it takes. And I'm really proud of you for living in that space. And so when I think of our listener base, I think about the community, like your truck focus podcast and people like people like Tyler and Bowline Logistics, you're just like, yes really good people in the industry that really care exist. So I'm really, man, that breakdown was so solid because more people need to hear that because it, at the end of the day, it makes your life as a human easier and oh, you can be fulfilled in your job to progress. You're not, oh, that guy was a jerk and all oh, this and this. It's like, no, 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 I'm in control. It's good. So anyway, yeah. I get really excited when people hit stuff. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, and, and you know, if, if somebody gives you a shitty attitude the whole way through the unloading or whatnot, and, and you're getting angry, it's not your place to let it out there. Uh, you're going to be after that. Once you leave there, you're going to be in your truck by yourself, and you can let it all out out there. Yeah. Just scream inside the truck and, and, and call him names, whatever. It doesn't matter because nobody's going to hear it anymore, right? Important is... In, in the moment when you're right there, you have to be professional. You have to be polite. That's what counts, right? What yeah. you think of this person, that, that doesn't matter. Because you're at the end of the day, this is, this is not the, you, you're not going to live with this person. You, you're there for two hours. And if you can get your shit together for two hours, then, yeah, then you're, you're doing it wrong. Great, man. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. So no, that was huge. I really, man, I'm grateful for that. That was a, uh, that's great leadership. So I appreciate that. And I've just appreciated our conversation today. And just as we do come to the end, I do have one last question and I really admire people that can hone in on their craft. And when I watch the pictures, or I guess I'm seeing the pictures that you take this from obviously from a truck and cargo perspective, yourself with the truck, the different environments that you're in, what kind of sparked that side? Have you always been interested in photography or is it just, and this looks cool, I'm gonna start taking pictures and spreading the word because I think it's phenomenal, but what sparked that? Um, I was always interested in photography um, nice. because it, in general, not just in, in the industry, um, in ge I, have, I, uh, I have a photo, photographer like i have equipment uh, worth more than three and a half thousand dollars at home uh unfortunately i don't get enough i had, don't have enough time to to actually use it but i i do my best it's for me is capture a moment that later on you will remember a story to it that's what 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 got me interested in it like uh, you like how how often do we forget beautiful things and then we look at one picture and everything comes back to mind and this is like all the good things that you remember are if you capture a picture that it all will it, it just it keeps it keeps you remembering those times um and i got interested in it and then i started like once i had when i had the chance to buy a half pro, it's considered a half professional camera that i had um i had the chance to get it from a friend for for a very decent very good price um, I got like I got into the whole editing and and um, uh, how you how you capture picture the, the the composition and all that stuff and to make what makes the difference between a vacation snapshot on the beach and a picture 
from the same vacation on the beach that you can hang up on the wall and say, and, and people ask it, let's say, well, that is an amazing picture, right? So it's my personal interest. And I always was interested in that. And uh, over the last five, six years, I, I did progress to the better a little bit. Uh, when I look at my first pictures, I probably would do them, edit them or comp composite them a little bit differently. Um, but it's just, and now being on the road nowadays with, with those camera, like with those phones, I actually, when I buy a new phone, I don't choose my phone by how fast they are or uh, how much, uh, how fast their internet is or all that stuff. I choose my phone by what camera they have, what can, what can this camera do that works in my favor to do my pictures. And, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, f for the last five years, I was lucky enough to be selected in the FGIs and uh, uh, load king calendars. Uh, I've had uh, in 19 and it was, what, how was it now? I have to remember 2019 FGI, 2020 load king, 2021 FGI, and now 2022. FGI and Load King, and I have, I had in 2019, I believe, I had two pictures in FGI, and I think this year, this year I also have two pictures in FGI. It's it's, it it kind of it makes me it makes me feel good. It makes me happy that that other people like the work that I'm doing. Um, it's just a passion of me and, and I'm lucky enough and on the road, it's just, yeah, sometimes it's a snapshot. Sometimes it's just, it, it's just an amazing background or whatever it is. And I'll, sometimes I do take my time and say, okay, you know what? I, I could go for another 30 minutes, but it's about to be an amazing sunset. And if I stop here, I have a, I'm, I'm ready for amazing pictures, right? And, and I, I make way more pictures that I, that I actually put on social media um, uh, because I, one time I saw uh, also a YouTube video of a guy who said, um, usually one out of 10 pictures is a good picture. And he's absolutely right. I, I, I went to the Calgary Zoo, for example, I made 750 pictures in one day. And I, I ended up editing maybe eight or nine of them. And that's what I put on social media. And all the other ones, I still have them, but they're, I, I would like, those are not, they're just not to my standard. That I, but I keep them because eventually one time I feel like I'm, I'm stumbling over another one from back in the days. And I figured, oh, you know what? Actually, if I edit it this way or that way, that would be a nice picture, right? But uh, yeah, I, I got over 10,000 pictures on my phone. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Incredible. I didn't know it went to that extent. And I remember when I first saw them, I was like, dude, yeah, like this is really good. And I've shared a couple because I'm like, man, I really like it. But I didn't know you made it to the, like into calendars. Is there a way that, like, is that something where people can go online to find them or how does that work? Um, well, FGI, FGI has, I think they have, they have them in the branches and I think they're for free okay. um, at FGI, what is mainly Western Canada. Yeah. Um, Load King, uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is more of a, like for Load King and for Load King customers that they send them out uh, on the weekend or whatnot, uh, on the new year, around the year. Um, it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, I have most of the pictures that are in there on, on my social media as well. Um, Can people visit your social? You're comfortable with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What platforms I, are you I, on? It's, it's all, it's all, um, um, publicly. I, I have nothing on privatized. Yeah. Like I, I got the LinkedIn and uh, the other one is mainly is, uh, Instagram where I have most of my pictures. And you're cool that I put the links in the show notes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll text them after to you so you can put them in there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So to our listeners, I will put the links in. Go check out these pictures. And honestly, it just gets you jacked. You're just like, yes, <laughs> it, you do a really good job, man. And yeah, I'm, that's good. I, I it's 
pictures are really a passion of mine and and i'm i'm happy whenever i see one of mine like we have in our office here in edmonton there there's two or three of my pictures not just mine also from other drivers but uh, it just makes me happy if 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 other people like my sense of art i want to say it's uh, it's a little bit of an artistic and it keeps my mind like i do this on the weekends to to keep my mind off uh, or to switch off my like it's almost like a little vacation if i sit on the computer and work on some edits uh, so yeah. get my mind completely in a different direction than just asphalt and loading and unloading yes yeah, man. Honestly, Sven, I am so grateful that we could obviously do this conversation, but more so I got to learn more about you. And yeah, I was just, I was really impressed initially, and I just really admire, like I said, your leadership. I know you really care, and we're just super grateful, obviously, from an industry standpoint. I identify as an industry advocate, so when people really care about industry, I'm like, okay, we're friends. Like, this is good. So I'm just really grateful, man. And I know from Bowline's perspective, they need leaders like yourself. And I know just from the conversations I have, they're really grateful that you're part of the team, that you're a leader, you're a champion, and you're doing a really good job. And I'm just super grateful that you took the time to join me on the podcast. This was a lot of fun. Of course. Yeah, it was a lot of fun for me too. I'm, I'm, uh, I never see myself as a, as a leader. I, I just, I, I do my job. It's, <laughs> that's what I'm getting paid for. But I, I'm fortunate that uh, I'm one, I want to say I'm fortunate that I do I do my dream job. I, I work like, yeah, I live my dream and therefore I'm not really working. And that's why I'm also passionate about what I'm doing because just, you know, it makes my life. I, I just feel so much better driving down the highway with a, with a load that, that I like to see going down the highway, the way that I like to see going down the highway. And then, um, yeah, it's, I think you have to be, you have to have a little bit, I always say I have, I have diesel in my blood and I've, I've been born with it. Uh, my, my dad and my mom both were in the, in the transport industry. Um, so yeah, my mom worked for the city, she drove city bus for 35 years. <laughs> and uh, my dad was, uh, he delivered, he did a lot of deliveries when he, in his younger years. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, I just, I like to drive. This is, I, I come home and I can sit in my car and drive for another six hours. No problem. <laughs> I just, it was, and it was literally the, the, the moment I sat the first time on the driver's seat and I started the engine, it was, I felt home. Like it's, I got this, that's where I belong. Yes. I got that feeling. And this is, this is, uh, I just can't get enough. Like I, yeah. I, my wife can sometimes she can't she can't really understand and she's like you're coming home from trucking and then you sit in front of your playstation and you play snow runner what is also trucking <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> like, can you ever get enough and i'm like no no i can't i can't it's just uh and and i think that that is uh that makes it that makes a difference too if you're passionate about it it definitely makes a difference uh in I'm not going. I'm not going to work because I'm getting paid for it, and you know I want to get home as quick as possible. I'm I'm going to work because I actually like my job, and I'm fortunate that uh, to be in this position to do the job that I really like. It's awesome, man. I'm happy for you. I'm really happy yeah. for you, and that's good. So again, I just want to say thank you, and yeah, well, thank it's, you. it's been awesome, my friend. So it's it's cool. been it's been a great conversation. Thank you. Great, absolutely. Amazing. Good. Okay. Well, I will talk to you again soon. And yeah, thank yeah. you again for hopping on. Of course. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, good luck or good success. Or I don't know what is, I, I don't know what is appropriate to say. <laughs> it's all good. Buddy. But all the best for, for, for everything uh, for you too. And we'll, we'll chat again. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Totally down. Ben, honestly, thank you so much, my friend, for taking the time joining me on the Truck Focus podcast. 
I really admire your passion that you bring to our industry, as well as the level of professionalism and leadership that you operate with as a professional driver. I really appreciated when you broke down the steps you take when we're talking about operating safely and what it takes, but also providing really incredible customer service advice. I think that was huge. So I really appreciate that. And as Sven mentioned during the interview, being a professional driver is essential for them to operate with safety, with leadership, with quality customer service. And I really admire that. I also really admire Sven's passion for photography, and I'm a huge fan of the pictures that he's taken and showcases online. So I highly recommend that you check him out online, just following him on social media. Those links are directly in the show notes before or below. Furthermore, as you could hear, Sven shared a handful of qualities that Bowline Logistics provides from an excellent owner in Tyler, excellent leadership, really good equipment, tons of miles, lots of good stuff. So if you're looking for a carrier that you want to work for, but also if you're looking for a carrier to handle your heavy loads, your flat debt work, I really highly recommend that you connect with Bowline Logistics by visiting bowlinelogistics.com. Again, their link is directly in the show notes below, so you can le learn more about the services that they offer. So before we end today, I just wanted to take a moment again to say thank you. So again, if this is the first time you've ever checked out the Truck Focus podcast, I really welcome you to our community. And to our dedicated community, thank you again for taking the time to listen, but also for continuously applying the knowledge shared and creating pivotal impacts in the lives of others within our industry. It really does mean a lot. So at the beginning of our interview, I gave you a challenge. I said, if Sven said anything that would spark something in you, that you're like, yes, I can apply that in my own journey that you let me know what it is, now's the time. So put it in the comments, send me a direct message, let me know, okay, what did Sven say that really did impact how you're gonna operate or how you're navigating your customer service, whatever it is. But I also asked that if that happened, that you share it out. So share out this episode and just say, hey, Sven taught me this or whatever it is, because again, that's super crucial because that way we're ultimately all able to create pivotal impacts. So I think that's really key. I also ask that you like this episode and subscribe to the channel that you're listening to because by subscribing, you're notified of all upcoming content. As always, let's create a pivotal impact.